What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another JHow Tech Tip, where we're going to cover how to use MSI Afterburner to give you that on-screen display. Whether you're getting benchmarks or you just want to get some stats so you know what's going on with your computer, we're going to show you how to set it up very easily. So let's get into it. All right, in the description below, there's going to be a link for the download for Afterburner. Now, one very important step is during the install process, you have to make sure that you install Riva Tuner Statistics with this, else the on-screen display won't work. They are bundled together. It is two separate installs within one. Make sure you install that. If you already have Afterburner installed and you're looking for Riva, there will be a link below as well in the description so that you can set this up and get ready. With Afterburner, there's a lot you can do from overclocking to visualizing different things and multiple user interfaces. We're not gonna go over all of those. We'll go over the key aspects related to this video. Now, if you want this on startup and you want it for each of your videos, there's a button on the front. You can just click the Windows Startup. That's just some housekeeping items. But to get into things, there's going to be a cog wheel. If you've already changed the user interface, it might look a little different because there are skins for this. But if you've just installed, you'll want to hit the cog wheel for the settings to bring up this menu. All right, now that we have this menu open, it's about what do we want to monitor? What do we want to display? Now you're going to go to the monitoring tab because this is what's going to be monitored and communicate to Riva. So now this is where we can set things up to display on screen. So there's a long list of things that go here, all the way from GPU usage to individual core. We're gonna focus on the main things that you'll normally see on benchmark videos versus what you normally use. However, this is up to what you want. We're gonna cover some of the more basic ones that most people use and most people are looking for. Now, once you click on something, this check mark doesn't indicate that it's going to be on screen. That part actually exists in the checkbox below where it says show in on screen display. If you do not have Riva installed, this option will actually not be here. So if you don't see this, make sure that you double check that Riva is installed. The GPU usage is something that of course we're looking for, as well as the GPU temperature. Other things that you might be looking for are the core clock. That's very common. The power that it's using is another one that we see very common. The fan tachometer, depending on how many you have, you might have multiple here, which GPU you have. The memory clock is another one we wanna keep an eye on memory usage as well. Now, one key thing about this, depending on how you want this set up, if you don't like the order that these are in, there's one simple trick, and that really is just clicking and dragging so that you can change the order with which you want them. It's not very difficult at all. You just click, drag, and therefore it's going to be there. As we continue to scroll down, you can always uncheck the things that you don't intend on using just for nice housekeeping. Now, another thing is when you're keeping an eye on the CPU, depending on which CPU you have, you're actually going to see basically the cores or the threads as you go down through here. If you want to summarize all that up, I recommend just going with CPU temperature and keeping that. That'll be a nice number to kind of take everything into consideration and keep this from being way too cluttered. Same thing for the CPU usage. We're gonna go down, we're gonna click on the CPU usage and make sure and put that in the on-screen display as well. As we go down, RAM usage is another thing we wanna keep an eye on, as well as the frame rate. This might not actually be ticked. A lot of times this is unticked by default. And then you can click, tick that on, and make sure and show in the on-screen display. Now, if you're into benchmarking and you've seen some of the other videos that are out there, you're gonna see some more options that are around frame rate from the minimum to the maximum to the average to the 1% low. You can check all of these things if you want to to put in your on-screen display. So if you are benchmarking and you are testing things against each other, you can use this to get those statistics that you didn't previously have. Now, once you're done with this, you wanna make sure you hit apply and make sure that goes through and then you're gonna hit okay. Now, once you've completed that, it's about customizing Riva. And this is actually very simple. If you go down to the bottom right of your windows, you might have to show the hidden icons. If you do, just go pull that up. It's going to look like this. You can left click and it's gonna bring it up. Now, there are a lot of tools within Riva that you're going to utilize, but most people are just fine with the basic settings. We'll go through some of those. Might look a little complicated, but this is actually easy. Application detection level, none, low, medium, and high. If you're just doing games, low is where it's at. Now there are profiles that you can load, but we're not gonna go into that because it's just not necessary for most people. If you find that whatever game you're playing isn't really showing up, you might have to raise the detection level, but low is normally what you need. Stealth mode, I wouldn't worry about that. 
going through here, there's a couple of things that if you know what you're looking for, you'll know what you're doing with Reva. But for what we're doing here, we're going to focus on the necessary things. On-screen display support, we want that on. Raster 3D should be the default. In older versions, this used to not be the default. We want that on there. On-screen display shadow. If you look, there's actually a shadow, a preview at the bottom. You can turn this on and off. You can see what those options look like, whether you want the gray box behind it, whether you want it off, whether you want the drop shadow. The drop shadow normally helps that stand out. Another thing is if you don't like the orange and you want green, perhaps you can click on the color palette here and then click and drag wherever you want and use the hex code or whatever you need to do. And then just hit OK and that's going to change the color. You can also change the size of this by using the zoom feature. Now you could just type in the coordinates essentially on where you want to use this based on whatever monitor resolution you have, or there's a really simple option. You can just actually click and drag. If you want it in a specific corner, just click on the corners and it will automatically put it there. But you normally want to have this a little bit off center, but depending on what you're doing and the type of videos you're trying to display, like some of those benchmarking videos, you might just put this in the middle and have this go through. It's really up to you. And that's really all about personal preference. And that's how easy it is to set up Reva. But that's it. That's how you set up MSI Afterburner to display the on-screen statistics with Reva Tuner Statistics Server. And it's really that easy. If this video helped you or you like this video, feel free to hit that like button or let me know in the comments below what you are using and whether you're trying to do some benchmarks or what purposes you're trying to use MSI Afterburner for with the on-screen display. Make sure to subscribe for more tech tips in the future and it also goes a long way to help the channel and your support is very much appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time.